we will end the show. Hi, good evening, welcome. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to your class number 11. Uh, I just want to check a little bit some parts of the midterm test. I need everybody to submit it. I have only Mauricio, Emerson, and Pablo now, but I just want these to um, um, stay in the records, okay? So uh, the first part, the first part of the midterm test was about selecting the best form of the verb, okay? Select the best form of the verb. Remember that this is simple present, all right? Simple present. So if we um, are going to uh, make a sentence, an affirmative sentence, then we are going to use the third form of the verb, all right? So my boss, we are going to select cleans because it has a letter S and it completes correctly the sentence, right? So what about number two? It says, I, I work. That's the correct form of the verb. I work from Monday to Friday. The next one says, my sister, oh, that's third person, it's she, okay? She. And it is a negative, so we are using the auxiliary verb does. Does not equals doesn't. All right. Doesn't take a shower every day. Just kind of, oh, stinky, right? My sister doesn't take a shower every day. Okay. Let's look at the number four. It says birds, plural, so it means they, right? They always, that's a, that is a place of the frequency adverb, right? Between the subject and the verb. So birds always sing in the morning, right? Always sing in the morning. Uh, we could say also every day, but every day has to go mostly at the end, right? First, sing in the morning every day. That's a different place in the sentence, right? So we use always right between the subject and the verb, all right? So first, I'm sorry, third, sing, always sing in the morning. Number five, she, ah, oh, this is the verb to be. With the verb to be, we have to be careful because when we use the frequency adverbs, they order is different. First goes the verb, uh, the verb to be, and then goes the frequency adverb. So is always, all right? It's not always is, it's not only always. It's is always, okay? Then we submit and we have our 2020, right? 20 points of 20 points. Oh, and this one, it was 25, right? Okay. 25. Let's go to part number two and just checking, right? Part two says instructions, select the best option. Select the best option. Okay. Para los que no lo han hecho, por favor, los que les hace falta, porque hay algunos que eh, no me han terminado el, eh, eh, el examen intermedio, perdón, the midterm test. Así que ahorita conéctense a la plataforma y hay que terminarlo. Esto tiene que estar subido, ¿ok? 
me hacen falta algunos, eh, no me gusta a mí eh, poner ahí el nombre, ¿verdad?, de cada uno que no lo ha hecho, cada uno es responsable, pero ahorita estamos ayudando para que, apoyando para que lo puedan subir los que no lo han terminado, ¿ok? Vamos, part two, instructions, select the best option. I, y aquí es qualifications, right? Qualifications. I can speak two languages, Russian and English. We select can, right? Number two, my sister. Can and can't doesn't change. For any subject, it's the same. Can and can't. So my sister can't type fast. She's very slow so we use the negative over here right number three i have been your friend ah here we have a time expression very important past time expression okay past time expression i have been your boyfriend since 2016 not for, because it's not a period, right? It's a period before when it is started. I'm still uh, in the situation, right? Uh, it says, well, they're still friends. So I have been your friend since 2016. All right, number four. I lived, oh, past tense, and it finished the action. I lived in San Salvador. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in 2005, it finished. Now, maybe I'm not, okay? I'm not living there. So I lived in San Salvador in 2005. Number five, I am working always that we say the company name we're going to say at not in we're going to say at okay i am working at pretty bank okay then we uh click on the submit button and you have your 25 and 25 a ver todos por favor los que no han finalizado el midterm test ahorita finalizando vamos a ver part three Conéctense, por favor, a la plataforma. Hoy tiene que quedar subido. Vamos. Instructions. Select the best answer. Select the best answer. To complete the sentence, right? Eat. A lot in Britain. It's third person. Simple present. Always rains. So we are going to say rains because it's it third person right it rains a lot in britain i likes like is like mm, i like pizza very much when we talk about our likes and dislikes we use the same rule right the same rule in the simple present i don't speak English very well. I don't, because for I, the auxiliary verb is do. So do not contract it, it's don't, okay? Don't speak. Let's look at number four. My sister, my sister, third person. So we need the auxiliary verb, verb does, does not, is doesn't. So the verb is go, doesn't go. My sister doesn't go to the cinema very often. My sister doesn't go to the cinema very often. All right, number five. They always, then we need a verb because we don't have the action right now in the sentence. So what is the activity here? Watch TV, right? Watch TV and it's they, then we use the plural form of the base form, watch. Watch TV in the evening, all right? Then we submit and we have our 25, uh, I'm sorry, 25 points for this part. Now, part four, it says, 
choose the best answer. Number one, it's part of a job application. Telephone number, yes, because it's personal information. Remember, personal information and professional information. Facebook, Facebook account has personal information. Yeah, it could be, but they don't need that. They need a contact, a contact phone number, right? So telephone number. It's part of employment history. The name of the company that I worked for, okay? The name of the company that I worked for, okay? What about number three? It's mandatory to write in an application form. Aha, uh -huh. what a signature. We need to sign it down, right? Okay, and then we have to unscramble the words to form a sentence, okay? It will be a great opportunity to study abroad, right? There you go, like this. It would be a great opportunity to study abroad. Remember, it, it ends in a period and it starts with capital initial, okay? Capital initial because it's a sentence. Capital initial and a period at the end. Next one, a training could be beneficial for our employees. So here at the end and at the beginning, capital initial, okay? So you click on the submit button and then you have your 100 points, right? 100 points. So here it is, four parts. Then you have, is there any questions so far about the midterm test? Is there any question? ¿Alguien tiene alguna pregunta? Del examen intermedio? Bien, en este momento vamos a verificar que hayan subido ahorita. Porque habían varios que no lo habían subido. Ok. Vamos a verificar plataforma que todos hayan subido su. Tengo algunos que no me lo han finalizado y algunos otros que eh, solo me han final. Me imagino que lo que les ha hecho falta es hacer las oraciones, ordenar las oraciones, porque tengo varios noventas. Quisiera saber si hay alguna duda para solventar esa situación y que todos tengamos eh, el 100% ¿verdad? del examen intermedio. Necesito su compromiso y su responsabilidad, chicos, por favor. A ver. Bien, ahora sí quiero hacerles un llamado. Eh, yo sé que están ahorita los que no me fallan, ¿verdad? en asistencia, pero tiene que quedar registrado que para los que van a ver el video posteriormente, quiero animarlos a que no falten a las clases, porque en, esa, en este momento puede ser que usted pierda algún, eh, alguna buena explicación y después se quede falto de ese conocimiento, ¿verdad? Y después se desaniman porque dicen, ay, es que ya no entendí, es que ya no lo aprendí. Y realmente pues queremos apoyarlos y que todo lo que se dé acá en la clase pues sea bien aprovechado, ¿verdad? Y que ustedes puedan lograr su objetivo. Entonces yo les animo a todos a que no falten. 
se inscribieron para la de 8 a 9, perdón, de 8 a 10, porque es un horario en el que todos eh, consideraron que iban a poder participar, ¿verdad? Así que déjenme animarlos y créanme, yo estoy aquí para ayudarlos, para darles el soporte necesario, ¿verdad? A modo que cumplamos el objetivo. Ok, dicho esto. Thank you, teacher. Ok, my pleasure. Así que ahorita vamos a comenzar entonces. Good evening, teacher. Hi, good evening, Wendy. Welcome. All right, we are going to start a class and remember that tonight we are starting unit three. Unit three, yeah, yay, unit three, yeah. We're almost at the end of the course. Well, right in the middle, right, right in the middle. But it's not that much to AM. We have only two more weeks, yay. So we're going to start a class and remember that unit three is really important because it, it's uh, for expanding our vocabulary, okay? It's for expanding our vocabulary. So we are going to start Introducing the class. Okay. Here we go. Yay! HR procedures, unit three. Okay. HR procedures. HR. What does HR stands for? What does HR stands for? ¿Qué significan esas dos palabras, estas dos letras? HR. Human resources. Yes, human resources. A ver todos, human resources. Vamos a ver. Human resources. Human resources. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Human human resources. Mm -hmm. Hagamos un poquito la diferencia entre el plural y el singular. Miren. Resource es un recurso. ¿Ya? Yeah? A resource. Ahora, re resources. Resources. Plural. Y el departamento de Ah, good evening, welcome. El Departamento de Recursos Humanos, miren, Recursos Humanos, it's in plural. So we say human resources, okay? Human resources. Human resources procedures. So human resources department procedure. Human resources area procedures. Human resources management procedures, okay? So it depends on how do they call the area in your companies. For example, some of your companies have departments. Some of your companies have directions. Some of your companies have management, gerencias, right? So it depends on how you call them in your own company. But in general, HR is HR, okay? Human resources, human resources. All right. Now, allow me to tell, one second. Allow me to tell you the objective of this unit, okay? The objectives for this unit, uh, you will be able to identify, to give and receive, to talk about, and to ask and answer. If you see all of the objectives are to speak, okay? To speak, mostly, okay? En mayor medida, el objetivo es que aprendamos a comunicarnos con el tema de recursos humanos, ¿verdad? So we need to identify procedures, methods, I don't know, actions, activities of human resources department, okay? We are going to identify. It, it means, it means not only information, but vocabulary, vocabulary related to HR, okay? 
give and receive instructions. Oh, okay, that's a very good point, right? Instructions given by human resources, okay? Given by human resources. Wow, we need to talk about activities that I am doing at my workplace. Activities that you are supposed to do in your workplace. Okay, that you are hired for. Okay, and then we need to make questions and provide with answers to people who request those, I mean, those pieces of information. So we are going to learn to ask and answer simple questions on performance, discipline, and behavior. Questions on performance, discipline, and behavior. It means we are going to try to use very formal language, okay? Polite language, polite behavior, good behavior. What's good behavior and what's not a good behavior, right? Okay. A ver, vamos a ver quién me quiere leer los objetivos. Who wants to read the objectives? For this unit. Uh, me, teacher. Okay, please go ahead. <clears throat> identify, identify a specific information of the human resource, the staff, organization, and their responsibilities within the department. Uh, give and receive. Give and receive instruction on company procedures and policies given, given by human research and uh, talk about talk about activities I am doing at my workplace. Ask and answer and ask and answer simple simple question on performance discipline and Behavior. Behavior, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, then, is there any question so far? Is there any question so far about the vocabulary in these objectives? Are we okay? Everybody understands what this means? No problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, then. The first topic. The first topic for tonight. Yeah, human resources vocabulary. We are going to expand just a little bit about the human resources words, terms related, things that they use, um, I don't know, maybe actions, activities, responsibilities, what do they do, right? So what is human resources? That's what we are going to study tonight. Human resources vocabulary. Human resources vocabulary. And this is your video conference number 11. Number 11, remember you are in module six, beginners, okay? So our objective tonight will be, at the end of the class, you will be, or I'm sorry, you will identify specific information of the human resources staff organization and their responsibilities within the department, okay? Who wants to read the class objective? Mauricio, do you want to read it? Okay, no problem. Okay, please. Uh, at the end of the class, participant will identify the specific information of the staff. Organization and their responsibilities 
within the department. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, then here we've got uh, an image that it gives us some ideas of what the human resources are for, right? So what is this area for? So here we have some words, we have people, it's a lot of things they do, right? It's not an easy activity. It's not easy to uh, manage people. It's not because you have to classify their qualifications. The, you need to find the right profile for the right job position. So it's not easy. They study and they specialize for that activity. Okay, They are specialists in perform these activities, okay? About managing people, okay? There you go. So our class agenda. Tonight we are going to start by a short feedback of unit two. Then we did our introduction and objectives, and then we have a brainstorm. What does HR do? Then we are going to try to use a business dictionary to, to find out some vocabulary. Then we have a conversation practice on page 29 in our manuals and in the breakout rooms, we are going to work on pages 29 and 30. Then the session one-on-one -on -one for tonight, uh, our after 10 minutes will be for Jose Bernardo Lopez Montes. Okay, today is your turn. Jose Bernardo, are you, are you able to stay? After class? Uh, no teacher. Yes. All right. There you go. Okay, then, guys. So let's go back just a little bit about the unit two. Who remembers what was the last unit about? A ver, ¿quién se recuerda de la unidad pasada? What was the last unit about? Mm -hmm. We started about uh staff and students. Exactly, staff and schedules. Staff and schedules. Yes, we have to practice the pronunciation, guys. Schedules. Schedule. Mm -hmm. And we said that people have activities to do in the company. They are hired for doing a certain type of activities because the objectives of the company are exactly that, to accomplish their mission, right? To accomplish their vision. So it means that getting the right people, doing the right activities will take the company to get their goal in their mission, right? So we have a schedule for each activity we do. We have a schedule of each activity we do. For example, maybe the first thing you do is to turn on your computer. It's not turning off, right? Because there is an order. Uh, there are activities that we always do, activities that we are not allowed to do. So we, we say never do that, those activities, right? We never do this and that. Okay, so yeah, we started how to say what we do and what we don't do. When we do the things we do and when we Why? don't do the things we don't do. Okay, so now let's continue with this. Um. Oh, 
Okay. The first thing I want you to check, okay, it's to read this paragraph. It's about an engineer, okay? It's, this is a profession or, or an occupation. Not all the companies, companies need an engineer, right? There are some type of companies that need engineers, okay? Building companies. What other companies do you think they need an engineer in their staff? What other company? ¿Qué otras compañías creen ustedes que necesitan un ingeniero en su staff? A building company? Yeah. Construction. Construction, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, forging companies. Again? Forging companies. Forging, all right. Mm -hmm. They create like architects too, right? They need some staff. Mm, that's uh, different professionals in a team, right? Engineers. And engineers, there are a lot of kinds. It's not only engineers for work, right? Or work engineers. They are also industrial engineers, mm, communication engineers. Uh, I don't know, maybe we could say safety engineers okay there are different specialties all right so now let's read what's the profile for an engineer for this company let's read it i'll give you 30 seconds okay les doy 30 segundos para que lean este par All right, Mr. Darío, do you want to read this paragraph for everybody, please? Mr. Alvarenga, Darío. Nelly, do you want to read it, please, for everybody? Working, working under the project director of the overseas building operations team, the mechanical engineer is responsible for overseeing and is inspecting all work elements of the construction site reviewing shop drawings and other construction plans, developing chains, orders, and cost estimate, estimates for the compound security upgrade and consular affairs modification project. Incumbent must be cap, cap, capable, of work, capable of working independently. Very good, thank you very much. What do you notice in this description? What's the way of writing the verbs? What is the form of the verbs we are using here? Um, with e, uh, with ing. Yes, that's different, right? We have seen um, at this moment that we talk about daily activities or the activities related to our job position 
in the simple present form of the verb, right? Simple present form of the verb. But here we're not seeing that, right? Aquí no lo estamos viendo eso, ¿verdad? Eso es lo que vamos a ver en esta unidad. Okay, ¿cómo usamos gerunds? Okay, ¿cómo usamos gerunds? Los verbos que llevan una ing se llaman gerundios or gerunds. And they have different yeah. usages. Tienen diferentes usos. Ok, no solamente está el presente progresivo, ¿verdad? Con el ING. También usamos de otra manera el ING. Así que ahorita yo voy a tomar eh, la asistencia. I will call the roll. And you are going to say one verb in the ING verb form. You are going to say a gerund instead of saying present. All right. Aquí hay un montón que pueden agarrar, miren, para decir al momento que les toque cuando escuchen su nombre y en vez de decir presente, vamos a decir un gerund, ¿ok? There you go. Are you guys ready? Please remember you have to turn your camera on. And when you call your name, you will say a gerund, okay? Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez Diaz. Working. Good. Cecilia Jasmine Mengibar Soto. Claudia Maria Guerrero Mejia. Writing. Good. Darío Antonio Alvarenga Gómez. Daisy Elizabeth Recinos Álvarez. Present teacher. Okay. Tell me a gerund, please. A ver, dígame un verbo terminado en ING, ING. Working. Good. Uh -huh. Great. Eduardo Franco Núñez. Learning. Good. Emerson Ulises Monroy Calix. Nothing is. Building. Great. Imelda Xiomara Pineda Castro. Miss Imelda, Irma Stephanie Carranza Rivas, Jose Alexander Hernández Carvajal, Searching, Good, Jose Bernardo López Montes, Swimming, Good, Jose Gerardo Rivera Ochoa. Karen Janet Granados Orellana Miss Karen Hi teacher Hi teacher Hi. How are you tonight? Aha uh -huh. I'm sorry, teacher. I estaba manejando, entonces no me activaba el micrófono. Ahorita llegué a mi casa. I was driving. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dario. All right. Okay. Uh, Mariana Scarlett Rodriguez Luna. Luis Javier Castillo. B building. Great. Marina Chancy Sandoval Bonilla. Playing. I'm sorry? Playing. Playing, good. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. 
Eleven. Again? Believing. Believing. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Seeing is believing. Good. <laughs> Nelly Lilibet Andrade Garcia. Overseeing. I'm sorry? Overseeing. Oh, good. Good. Good there. Norma Patricia, Viuda de Arre. Ah, she is sick. All right. Oscar Noé Magaña Martínez. Sleeping. All right, but you're not sleeping now, right? Okay. Pablo Adalberto Abrego Vázquez. Evening. Hi, good evening. My word is evening. evening. Oh, you, you're worried. <laughs> ah, okay, but that's not really a verb. That is not really a verb. <laughs> oh, okay, happening. Uh -huh. I'm sorry? Happening. Having. Yes. Oh, okay, Having. thank you, thank you. Okay, Sandra Leticia Peraza Sandoval. Present teacher, uh, developing. Oh, very good, uh-huh. That's developing, developing, developing. yeah. Mm -hmm. Tatiana Yvonne Torres de Beltrán. Miss Tatiana, aren't you in yet? No, I don't think she is in. Wendy Maricela Ramirez Guevara. Miss Wendy. Uh huh. We we are not able to hear you. I'm sorry, Wendy. Can you write it on the chat? Hola. Hi, now yes, now we are able to hear Teacher, you. Teacher, sorry. Uh -huh. Okay. Training. I'm sorry? Training. Training, good, good. Training. All right, thank you very much, Wendy. Okay, people, so now we are continuing with this and let's remember what we were reading, okay? We were reading about uh, an engineer, right? an engineer, part of a staff of a construction uh, company, okay? A construction company. Hmm. And we were reading that in the profile description or his responsibilities are working under the project director of the overseas buildings operations team working, right? Working. Then we said, um, let me see, overseeing, inspecting, mm -hmm. reviewing, developing. Um, let's look another one. It was, uh, again, working, right? Working, all right. Let's read these words, okay? Let's read these words. Mm -hmm. Allow me to share the screen for you to read the words. Oops, sorry. Hmm. Okay. I have too much windows open, so anyway. So we have, a bit. what's the first ING verb form you see? Working. Working, yes. Another one? Building. Well, buildings, because is the name of that object, right? 
but it's not a okay. verb exactly in this in this sentence, right? Mm -hmm. Reviewing. Reviewing, yes. Uh huh. Drawing. Overseeing. Overseeing. Uh huh. Okay. Inspecting. Uh -huh. Inspecting. Reviewing. Overseeing. Uh huh. Drawings. Okay, drawings is the same as buildings. Do you see they have a letter S at the end? So these are plurals, so they are objects, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. They are objects. Look and look. Developing. Kind of different, right? Developing, developing. The strong voice is in v, developing, okay? Developing, mm -hmm. what else? We have no other, right? More than working. More All right. Mm -hmm. Yes. But let's look at the order or the placement of these words in the sentence. Where are they in the sentence? Are they at the beginning? Are they in the middle? Are they at the end? Where are they? Let's look at the first one. The first sentence start here, right? Working under, ta -dun 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 -dun. Oh, sorry, sorry. And then goes to the first, yeah, to the first comma, right? To the first comma, that's the first sentence. So if this is a sentence, let's look at the placement. Where is it located? Where is this? Right at the beginning. Beginning, yes, right at the beginning. It means that this is a subject. Okay, this is a subject. So we are going to say this when wow. a verb, okay, we, when a verb becomes a noun, becomes a noun. It has to take the ing verb form and it takes the function of a subject, okay? Or a noun, right? Subject, object, or noun. That's the function of this word in the sentence. Subject, noun, or object, okay? Entonces, estamos viendo que aquí no está funcionando como un verbo. Está trabajando como, perdón, está eh, representando el nombre de la acción, ¿ok? El nombre de la acción. Entonces aquí dice, no dice trabajando, aquí dice trabajar, ¿ok? Trabajar, así sería el, la traducción, digamos, ¿verdad? Ok, vamos a ver cómo funciona esto en una conversación. Okay, in a conversation on or in real life. And let's go back just a little bit on unit one, right? I'm sorry, on unit two, on unit two. And there we have a conversation we didn't practice. It was for these reasons, because we wanted to um, join this topic with the other topic, okay? Let's go to page 25, page 25, okay? And let's read this conversation. Page 25 and your manuals. Okay, here we are seeing a conversation between Celia and Marcos. Good morning, Marcus. How is your day going? Pretty good. I just finished interviewing some potential employees. Then I have to talk to the staff about some changes in the schedule. I see. I saw some people in the reception when I came. Yes, I rescheduled some of them uh, tomorrow. I need to make some calls in some minutes. Anyways, how about you? Just the usual, checking that the personnel is ready and ordering the inventory. I thought ordering the inventory was the next job. Okay, let's read it slower. Good morning, Marcos. 
How is your day going? Pretty good. I just finished interviewing some potential employees. Then I have to talk to the staff about some changes in the schedule. I see. I saw some people in the reception when I came. Yes, I rescheduled some of them tomorrow. I need to make some calls in some minutes. Anyways, how about you? Just the usual. Checking that the personnel is ready and ordering the inventory. I thought ordering the inventory was Jeanette's job. Is there any questions so far about the vocabulary in this conversation? No questions? Okay. Can you please tell me what ING verb forms do you see here? Interviewing. Interviewing, yes. Uh huh. Checking. Checking, yes. Mm -hmm. So interviewing and checking are activities. And these are name of activities, okay? Checking is not only, uh, it's not only chequeando, no. También se puede traducir como chequear o el chequeo, okay? Aquí, eh, aquí puede ser de entrevistar. Nosotros utilizamos la partícula de, ¿verdad? Acá no utilizamos ninguna conjunción para unir que termine de, ¿verdad? Sino que después de finished, de una sola vez, pongo el objeto en este caso, ¿verdad? Entonces, I just finished interviewing some potential employees, interviewing. Okay, what about this one? Going, going. Este será un gerundio? Sí. Yes, it is, but, mm -hmm. pero este sí es propio, ¿verdad? Este sí es yendo. ¿Por qué? Porque este es un Presente progresivo, ¿verdad? How is your day going? How is... Ah, aquí hay un verbo to be que se conjuga con el ing, ¿verdad? Entonces, por ejemplo, how are you doing? When are you coming? Esas son cuando usamos el presente progresivo, ¿ok? En este caso, interviewing and checking... No son presente progresivo. Son sujetos de la oración. ¿Ok? Son nouns. ¿Ok? Bien. ¿Hasta ahí vamos bien? ¿Is there any question? ¿Is there any question? No question. Thank you very much. So now we want to listen to Wendy and Emerson, please. Wendy is Celia and Emerson is Marcos. Please role play the conversation. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, Marco. How is your day I going? Pretty good. I just finished interview some potential employees. Then I have to talk to the staff about the, some change in the schedule. I see a, some some I saw some a people in the reception where I came. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, I rescheduled some of them tomorrow. I need to make some calls in some moment. Anyway, how about you? Use do you start checking that the personnel is ready or already the inventory? I thought ordinance in the inventory was Janet Jobs. Yes. Thank you very much. Now, Jose Bernardo and Claudia Maria, please role play the conversation. Jose Bernardo is Marcos and Claudia is Celia. Good morning, Marcos. How is your day going? Pretty good. I just finished interviewing some potential employees. Then I have to talk to the staff about some changes in the schedule. I see. I saw some people in the reception when I came. Yes, I rescheduled some of them tomorrow. I need to make some calls in some minutes. Anyways, how about you? Just the usual. Checking that the personnel is ready and ordering the inventory. I thought ordering the inventory was Janet's job. Very good. Thank you very much. Now let's refine just a little bit some pronunciation, some word pronunciations here. For example, we are going to say this finished. Okay. Finished. 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 All right. Then mm, here, I saw some. I saw some. Everybody, please. I saw some I people. Saw some. I, I saw, saw some, some people. Uh -huh. Aquí no I hay saw. N. Miren, saw some. Sop, some. No sop, porque sop sería jabón. Okay, Hello. ajá, aquí sería, I saw, así miren, abierto, I saw, ajá, saw, ajá, I saw, saw, I saw some people, I saw some, I saw some, I saw some. Uh -huh. es que saben qué pasa, y les voy a decir algo, esto es bien interesante, que a nosotros, en nuestro idioma, nos han enseñado eso de la cacofonía, ¿verdad? Entonces nosotros tendemos a no unir sonidos iguales. Entonces a nosotros en español nos cuesta decir dos sonidos iguales juntos. Por eso nos cuesta mucho los, los trabalenguas, fíjense, porque en español estamos con aquella regla de no cometer barbarismos, ¿verdad? Pero en inglés... Hay muchas palabras que se unen. Por ejemplo, vaya, vamos a decir, a ver, es un ejemplo, nos vamos a salir un poquito para divertirnos y vamos a decir así, miren. The worst word in the world is war. A ver, todos. The worst word in the world is war. Yeah, great. You know it, right? I think you know it. Uh -huh. Okay, it's like this, okay? The worst word in the world is war, okay? The worst word in the world is war, okay? The worst word in the world is war. Yes. War. Uh -huh. Whoa, 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 right? <laughs> uh-huh. The worst word in the world is war. A ver, Emerson. The worst word in the world is war. Yay. A ver, ahora más rápido, Claudia Maria. The worst word in the world is war. Yay, Nelly. The worst word in the world is war. Yay. Darío. The worst word in the world is war. Yes, Eduardo. The worst word in the world is war. Yay, Mauricio. The worst word in the world is war. Yes. Okay, now we have just a little more open, okay, our minds. And when we listen to 
two sounds, similar sounds together, we are not going to have any problem, okay? So this is one of those. So some, I saw some people, I saw some people in the reception when I came. A ver, a ver, todos abran su micrófono aunque se oiga como el mercado. Vamos a ver. I saw some. I saw some people in the reception when I came. I saw some people in the reception when I came. When I came. When I. When I. When I came. When I came. When I came. Yes. Great. Okay. Let's look at the, the next one. All right, please watch out your audio, okay? Now, we are continuing here. Then we have the other, anyways. Anyways, it's plural in this case, all right? Like, uh, anyways, no importa. Mm. Bueno, como sea, okay? Anyways, anyways. También podemos usarlo en singular como anyway, okay? And it doesn't make any difference, I think. Okay, if you use it like anyways, thinking about different ways, that doesn't matter. I mean, that don't matter, but it's also one way that it doesn't matter. So anyway, okay? Anyways, pero si lo vemos así y lo escuchamos así, entonces hay que imitarlo así, okay? Si lo escuchamos en singular y nos toca imitarlo, entonces hay que imitarlo en singular. Anyways, son... Muchas maneras que no importan. Que, ok, eso, pero ni modo, tengo que, ¿verdad? Entonces, anyways. Ahora, si yo lo escucho en, en singular, bueno, voy a decir anyway. Ok, vamos a ver. Then it says personal. Personal, ok. Ahí no personal. es, ajá, porque hay dos palabras. Acordémonos que hay una que es personal y hay una que es personal. Personal is inherent to the person, okay? Belongs to the person. But personnel is the staff that work in a company, okay? Personnel, now, okay? Now. Esta es la fuerza de voz acá. A ver todos esta palabra, personnel. 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 It's not personal. It's personal. Personal. Ajá, uh -huh. now. Aquí va a caer la fuerza de voz para que sí nos estemos refiriendo a la gente que trabaja en la compañía, al personal, ¿verdad? Es como en español, si decimos algo personal, lo, lo vamos a identificar en el contexto, ¿verdad? Pero acá no. Acá lo vamos a identificar en la pronunciación, el personal decimos, o oh, eso es personal, va ah, en el contexto cambia, ¿verdad? En español en English and pronunciation ¿ok? Bien, vamos a ver, mm, ahí estamos bien, esas son las mayores dificultades que escuché bien, teacher, Dí, dígame en Marcos, yes, hay rescheduled este, rescheduled mm -hmm. Rescheduled. Rescheduled. Es como que lo dijéramos así. Vamos a ver si. Como que yo dijera así. Rescheduled. Sí. Rescheduled. Ok. Ok. Rescheduled. Yes. Rescheduled. Yes. Correct. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Rescheduled. Eso significa reprogramar, ¿verdad? Lo voy a quitar porque es un pecado que lo hagamos, ¿verdad? <laughs> Pero nos facilita un poquito visualizarlo, ¿verdad? Okay, people. Now, um, let's think about these questions. What kind of job does Marco have? What 
kind of job does Marcos have? What do you think? Interviewing some potential employees. Okay, uh-huh. And what else does he do? Uh, human resource. Oh, yes, uh-huh. Maybe he is, a, he is an specialist in the human resources department, right? All right. What about his responsibilities? What are his responsibilities? Let's say, let's try to tell them in, using ING. Interviewing, what else? Talking, okay. Talking to the staff, what else? Um, reschedule. Schedule. Rescheduling or scheduling, okay. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, some, some interview calls. for uh, tomorrow. Okay, making calls, right? Making calls. Mm -hmm. Making calls. What else? Well, Celia have different, right? What are Celia's responsibilities? Okay, and what else? Ordering ordering the inventory. inventory. All right, there you go. So we are using ING to mm, name the activities, right? Or the responsibility. Okay, how similar are the activities they do with the ones you do? Do you do these kind of activities? Do you? Do you do some of these activities? ¿Alguien hace alguna de esas no. actividades acá? Do you make calls? Do you make yeah. No? yeah. Yes, all right, then you have a similar activity. It's not from human resources maybe, but you have that activity. What else? Do you reschedule things? Do you reschedule things for a different date? No. No, you don't reschedule yes. anyone. Yes, yeah. all right, all right. You I reschedule. reschedule. I I reschedule activities because uh because uh interview the personal. Uh, all right. So you interview pe people. Yes, of course. All right. So you have a very similar activities like interviewing some potential employees. I uh, interview the. Personal and oh. resource human. All right. Contrata, contrata this. Hire. Hire. Hire people. Resource human hire. Uh, after interview. Okay, so you interview people in the human resources department and you hire people. All right, good. Hmm? Do you check and order the inventory? Is there anyone here who has that activity? Ordering the inventory? Uh, no? Me, no. All right, do you check the inventory? Is there anyone here who does that? No? Yes, teacher. Yes, you do. All right. Great. Yes, yes nice. Okay. Then ordering the inventory is one of your activities, right? If you see, we are trying to make this like this. Okay. Hagamos las oraciones entonces. Interviewing. Uh, the personnel is one of Mauricio's activities or responsibilities, right? A ver, vamos a ver de todas las que mencionamos ahorita. A ver, una oración similar. Daisy said, Daisy's, Daisy's, uh, responsibility. 
is to check the inventory, okay? Ok, veamos entonces el orden de las oraciones. Fíjense que si se fijan en la primera, hemos puesto ING at the beginning of the sentence. Pero en esta necesitamos que si llevamos una persona o un pronombre al inicio o antes de eh, el ING, que sería acá, checking, ok, es checking, the inventory, entonces lo tenemos que usar como un posesivo. ¿Por qué? Porque esto es un objeto, ya no es un verbo, ¿ok? Entonces, como esto es un objeto el, y el sujeto en este caso eh, está afectado, ¿verdad? Está afectando el objeto, entonces necesitamos ese apóstrofe y ese de posesivo. ¿Ok? Vaya, vamos a ver, hagamos otra oración diciendo las actividades que nosotros hacemos de esta manera. Vamos a ver, decíamos eh, rescheduling, ¿verdad? Rescheduling the interviews is another, res eh, Mauricio's responsibility, right? Mauricio's responsibility. ¿Ok? Vamos a ver, una más, una más. La de Darío, ¿cuál era? No recuerdo cuál de estas es igual a las de Darío. Vamos a ver. Um, mm, mm. Making calls, right? Yeah, yeah, making calls. Was... Ok. Uh -huh. Darío's responsibility is making call or some calls, right? Podríamos decir some calls. ¿Ya? Yeah. Entonces, volvemos a ver que necesitamos un posesivo, ¿verdad? Antes del gerundio que estamos diciendo de la actividad o la responsabilidad que nos toca. Es decir, ¿de quién es esa actividad o de quién es esa responsabilidad? ¿Verdad? Ok. Y si se fijan acá, miren, Ordering the inventory was Janet's job. Entonces, podemos poner esa. Janet's job is ordering the inventory. Ok. Vale. En este caso, yo lo he puesto en, en, en presente, ¿verdad? Con el is. Aquí está consignado con el pasado porque es como una duda, ¿verdad? Eh, yo creí que era la actividad o era el trabajo de Janet. Pero aquí lo estamos diciendo de forma diferente, ¿verdad? El trabajo de Janet es ordenar el inventario. ¿Ok? ¿Estamos bien? ¿O hay alguna duda? ¿Is there any question so far? ¿Cómo usamos entonces los gerunds? How do we use the gerunds? As subjects, as nouns, and as objects. Okay? Nouns, objects, and subjects. All right. Is there any questions so far? Vamos bien. Okay. Okay, then let's move to page 29, page 29. And we want to identify specific information of the human resources staff organization, right? And also their responsibilities within the department. Um, 
The first thing we want to see is what do you know about the HR department and your company? What do you know about the HR department and your company? Okay, voy a ponerles por acá para que nos vayamos al Mentimeter. ¿Ya han hecho Mentimeter ustedes? ¿Alguien ha hecho el Mentimeter? Es una aplicación en donde ustedes van a participar, ¿ok? Allow me to open this. You are going to write one word answer, okay? One word answer. Solo van a responder con una palabra, ¿qué hace Human Resources? ¿Qué hace el Departamento de Recursos Humanos? What does Human Resources Department do? One word, okay? Vamos a ver. Déjenme mostrarles esta. No sé por qué no lo puedo abrir. Ya, yeah, hoy sí. Vamos. Vaya, permítanme que lo vamos a hacer bien. Ustedes van a escribir en el buscador de Google, van a poner www Mentimeter, así, Mentimeter.com y van a introducir ese código, ¿ok? You are going to introduce that code. ¿Sí están viendo el código ahí? Yes, teacher. Ok. Entonces, vamos a la búsqueda de Google y ponen www.mentimeter.com. You introduce the code and you write your answer. Okay? What does Human Resources Department do? One word answer. Very good, select, mm -hmm. interview, mm -hmm. hiring, good. Mm -hmm. Calls or calling, right? Mm -hmm. Organize, okay. Interviews. Firing, yeah, that's so sad, but yes, aptitude test, good. Uh -huh. Psychological test. Mm -hmm. Supervising, yes. Firing again, all right. Supervising, developing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Rescheduling. Mm -hmm. What else? 
talk to the staff, all right. Files, all right. Mm -hmm. Great. Checking the personnel, good. Mm -hmm. Files, hiring policies. Organizing. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Hiring policies, uh huh. Publish vacancies, all right, like job listing, uh huh. Mm -hmm. All right, this is really interesting. Don't you feel when uh, you were trying to answer this, didn't you feel that you needed like a subject before the verb with it, without the ing? For example, what does human resources department do? Ah, uh, When we answer, remember, we say they check, they organize, they talk to the staff, right? We need, we need this subject, right? But when we don't have a subject and we just make a list of the activities or the responsibilities, we use the ING, okay? Because that's the subject. Those words become a subject. So that's why we say supervising, rescheduling, developing, checking the personnel, talking to the staff, training, ordering, organizing, interviewing, mm, job listing, right? Mm, testing, evaluating, okay? So we use the IND. Why? Because we need this subject to answer. We, we really expect that in your answer, you say a subject, all right? That's why we use ING as a subject here, okay? When they ask for the activities you do, the activities any area do, does, then you are going to use the ING verb form. It's kind of easy to get it, but we have to practice this, all right? Thank you very much for your participation in this Mentimeter activity. That was a brainstorm. Okay, ahora, con esas palabras que pusimos, tratemos de elaborar a definition, una definición. Okay, tratemos de elaborar ahora una definición. El sujeto es the HR department is in charge of, y luego decimos todas las actividades. Vamos a ver, hagamos la definición. Escriban a ustedes a su modo y la empezamos a compartir cuando yo diga nombres, ¿ok? Let's make a definition. What does HR department do? Usemos las palabras que todos pusieron. Let's use those words.
Jose Alexander, please tell us your definition of HR department. HR department. Mm -hmm. yeah. Solo la palabra o... No, a definition. A ah, definition. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Let's start with the subject. The HR department is the HR department is the area that. Uh, Making interviews for mm -hmm. for new hirings and organize organize uh, organize um, trainings for for the workers. All right. Uh -huh. and, um, Hay demasiadas ideas y no. <laughs> okay. No All right. Thank you, Jose. But look, eh, la idea acá es que sepamos cuál forma voy a utilizar, ¿verdad? Voy a utilizar el tiempo presente y si lo voy a utilizar, usarlo de la manera más adecuada. Eh, si yo digo, por ejemplo, the human resources department is Ah, entonces estoy hablando de una tercera persona, ¿ok? Entonces, si digo, is the one that organizes, uso tercera persona, ¿sí? Porque así comencé mi oración, ¿verdad? Ahora, si yo eh, digo, the human resources department is the area in charge of... Ahí voy a usar ING perform porque hay una preposición, ¿verdad? Entonces voy a decir of hiring the new personnel, ¿ok? Ahí ya uso ING, ¿verdad? ING perform. Ahora, si yo digo, um, for example, right? The managers of human resources department, ajá, ahí yo puedo utilizar la forma base, porque estoy usando el plural, ¿verdad? Puedo decir, hire people, train people, ok. Pero ahorita estamos viendo que el ING perform nos está pidiendo un eh, posesivo antes de la forma, ¿verdad? O una preposición, ya vimos que hay varios usos, ¿verdad? Entonces, subject, object. Or noun, ¿sí? Entonces vamos a ver qué otra definición me pueden dar tomando en cuenta la forma correcta ¿va? del verbo que van a utilizar o de la forma que van a utilizar para decir la acción o la actividad. Vamos a ver. Uh, is there anyone who wants to participate voluntarily? Voluntariamente. A ver. Solo uno, uno. No se, no, no se me amontonen, por favor. Se me van a quedar enojados los demás. Me, teacher. <laughs> All right, please, please, go ahead. Uh -huh. The human resource department is, in, is the area in charge of hiring people, training the new employees, supervising the areas, making a psychologic test to the new employees. Great. It's a very good definition and you used correctly the gerunds. Very good. All right. Now, guys, vamos a ir. A ver, ¿alguien quiere compartir la suya? Su definición. Claudia wants, right? Yeah, I know that you want it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh -huh. HR department is a staff that hires prospects. Very good, very good. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's a very good word instead of candidates, right? Prospects. All right. Great. Now, uh huh. Yo sé que Daisy quiere participar. Daisy wants to participate. Tell us your definition, <laughs> Daisy. <laughs> okay. Thank you. There's 
amas um, there's a massive difference between uh, her HR her her ¿cómo se pronuncia? Her 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 human resource Ajá, HR, HR. HR, uh -huh. Human Resource Department. That's contributes to the growth of the organization and a distant era. HR, HR, that exists some, somewhere near the basement 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 archives archives como es esa palabra archives es una palabra archives. para nosotros dijera archives verdad pero es archives 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 uh -huh. and only once a year for the company holiday party. All right, all right. Uh, I think you were talking about taking records or keeping track of the personnel, right? Like registering or having um, continuity to the personnel, right? To the personnel in the company, uh, taking the archives. All right, the record, the files. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, teacher. Good, good. All right, people. So now let's say the activities they are in charge of. A ver, veamos. ¿Qué actividades entonces son las que corresponden a Human Resources Department? A ver, vamos a ver todos, entre todos, regresando, vamos a ver. Regresando. Uh -huh. Decían primero, ahí en el Mentimeter. Ok, almost there. Are we sure? Aha. Uh -huh. Checking, checking, checking what? Checking the profiles, checking the qualifications, checking what? A ver, hagamos un listado de actividades. Let's make a list of activities con nombre y apellido. Vamos a ver. Vamos a ver. Sería checking. De, uh -huh. online. Profiles. With, no, compliance with pol the policy. Compliance with the policies, okay? With the policies. All right. Uh -huh. A ver, ¿qué más hace el Departamento de Recursos Humanos? What else do they do? A ver, hmm, aquí tenemos varios, ¿ok? Training, bueno, si lo decimos en orden, in order, right? The first thing is checking the profiles, right? Checking that they match, right? With the needs of the company, with the candidates, right? With the candidates' profiles. All right, then we could say checking the profiles, both profiles, the one that they require and the one that they are receiving or people offering, right? So let's continue. After that, mm -hmm, interviewing, okay? But before interviewing, we could say organizing, the meetings, right? Organizing the meetings. Organizing the meetings también significa eh, como to set up an appointment, right? Como setting up, aquí lo vamos a poner así, miren. Setting up the 
appointments for each interview, right? To schedule or scheduling the appointments, right? That's organizing the meetings, all right? Then, interviewing. ¿Qué más? A ver, ¿qué sería? Supervisor, the order. The potential, I'm sorry? Uh, research. Research. Huh? Human research, supervising. Supervising. The? The order. Orders? Ordering. Eh, ¿A qué se refiere exactamente? Ordenamiento. Ordenamiento. ordenamiento el en orden. Es, ¿El orden de la gente o el orden de que todo esté bien? De, aquí, de todos los puestos de trabajo. Ah, ok, ok. Entonces, supervising tendría que ser the personnel. Ya. Yeah. Sí. Supervi supervising the personnel. We could... Uh, Mm. Put in, in, in the parentheses, like uh, we could say behavior, right? Behavior. Uh, what else? Behavior, everything is in order. Everything is doing their, what they are hired for, right? So discipline, yeah. Discipline. Uh, dress codes, right? Dress code. Etc. Right? Que todos cumplan las normas, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. All right. What else? Reviewing the employment references. Oh, good. Uh -huh. Employ. Uh, sería the candidates. Mm -hmm. The references. Reference. Very good. References. Aha. Uh -huh. What else from those we have here? Uh huh. Training. New employee. There you go. Mm -hmm. Training. And then you. Employee. Employee. Very good. Mm -hmm. Checking the calls. Checking the calls of uh, to the department, or how can you explain that, Karen? Uh, yes, of department. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the calls. Ah, uh, yeah. De las llamadas, como cuando alguien se reporta enfermo o algo así. Ah, uh, sí. Okay. Checking the calling in. Okay, the calling in. Mm -hmm. There you go. Checking the calling in. And then, well, after this one, hiring, right? Hiring. Mm -hmm. uh, what is a meeting of fighting? Fighting is um, despidiéndolos, right? Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fire people like this, fire people. Firing personnel for disciplinary reasons, for any other kind of reasons, or just a uh, potting, right? Just a normal potting, right? There you go. Okay, these are some of their responsibilities. We made the list using the IND verb form, all right? So now let's go back. Let's go back to our manuals, right? Por ahí se los puse en el chat por si los quieren agarrar así. And copy paste. Bien. Let's go back to the page 29. And there we have Mr. Chang and Dorian. And they are talking because this is kind of, um, uh, well, an interview or something like that. But let's uh, try to define what's going on in this conversation. All right, Mr. Chang and Dorian. There we go. 
I will read it for you and then you will practice. Oh, here is Mr. Chang and Dorian. Excuse me, I'm looking for Miss Chavez. Can you tell me who, he, who she is? Sure, she is the recruitment coordinator. I see, and could you tell me about her responsibilities? Basically, she provides recruiting administrative support for the team of recruiters. I understand, and does Mr. Salgado work here? What does he do? Yes, Mateo Salgado, he is a talent management consultant. Where can I reach him? He returns at one o'clock. All right, let's read it slower. Excuse me. I am looking for Miss Chavez. Can you tell me who she is? Sure. She is the recruitment coordinator. I see. And could you tell me about her responsibilities? Basically, she provides recruiting administrative support for the team of recruiters. I understand. And does Mr. Salgado work here? What does he do? Yes, Mateo Salgado. He is the talent management consultant. Where can I reach him? He returns at one o'clock. All right. Is there any questions so far about the vocabulary in this conversation? Yes, the pronunciation is recruitment or recruitment. No, no, recruit, recruit. Yeah. Recruitment. Yes. Uh -huh. And basically. Basically. Uh, basically, okay. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. There you are. Mm -hmm. Is there any other question? Recruitment, recruiting, recruiters, right? It's kind of very involved, right? <laughs> Así como bien enrollada la lengua, ¿ya? Yeah? Si lo dijéramos con nuestro acento, quizás sería como recruitment, right? With our accent, but it doesn't sound so good. So we have to put our tongues like recruit, recruit. Right. Okay, now we want to hear you guys. Wendy and let's look at Mauricio, please. Mr. Chang will be Mr. Mauricio and Dorian okay. is going to be Miss Wendy. Excuse okay. me. I'm looking for Miss Chavez. Can you tell me who she is? Sure. She is the screaming coordinator. I see. And could you tell me about her responsibility? Basic, basically, she provides reading administrate administrative support for teaching of recruiter recruiters recruiter i understand and does mr mr salgado work here what does he do yes mateo salgado he is the talent manager consultant where can I reach him? I return at one o'clock. He, he returns. He, he returns at, at one o'clock. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A ver, a Mauricio le salió fácil porque no, te, no tuvo que decir recruitment, ¿verdad? Okay. <laughs> All right. Vamos a Thank ver. Thank you for you, teacher. <laughs> yeah. Este ya era compadre hablado, ¿eh? 
Ok, people. A ver. Eh, ya casi quiero ver. Son 43. Y si nos vamos 10 minutos al, al, al breakout room para practicar esta. Ok. Nos vamos 10 minutitos, pero eso sí. Vamos a finalizar con este pair work. Ok. Get in pairs and discuss the following questions. Who is Miss Chavez? What do you think Mr. Chang does? Ok. Vamos a ver entonces. Si se entiende lo que vamos a hacer, practicar la conversación, to practice the conversation and do the pair work. On page 29. All right. I hope everybody's available to practice, guys. All right. Espero que todos estén available para practicar. Tengo varios oyentes. Eso me detiene un poquito para ponerlos en el breakout room, pero vamos a hacerlo, ¿ok? Vamos a tratar de que lo hagamos. Good evening. Pensé que estaba sola. Oh, que he apagado la cámara porque tengo un problema con. Pero estamos ahí. So sorry. Vale. Tiene el manual a la, a la mano porque no puedo compartir. Eh, sí, aquí lo tengo en WhatsApp. Vaya. Ok. ¿Comienza usted yo? o yo? Ajá, comienzo yo. Bye. Excuse me. I am looking for Mr. Chavez. Can you tell me who she is? Sure. She is the recruitment coordinator. I see. And I, could you tell me about her responsibilities? Basically. She provides recruiting administrative support for the team of recruiters. I, recruiters. I understand. And does Mr. Salgado work here? What does he do? Yes, Mateo Salgado, he is the talent management consultant. Where can I reach him? He returns at one o'clock. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay. Vamos a ver. Contestamos las preguntas ya. O oh, vamos a practicar. Si quieres respondamos. Who is Mr. Chavez? Who is Mr. Chavez? Es el recruitment coordinator. Recruitment coordinator. Recruitment. 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 
What do you think Mr. Chang does? ¿Qué piensa usted que hace Mr. Chang? Creo que sería recruiting administrative support. Kind of Mr. Chavez, he didn't get a Uh-huh, yes, yes. Uh -huh. eh, yes, she is recruitment coordinator. Uh -huh. Es correcto. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Business coordinator. Pregunta, what do you think that Mr. Chan does? Yes. Yeah, Mr. Chang is looking for two employees. Teacher, me puede regresar a la sala 2. <laughs> ok, just give me one second. Okay. I'm seeing that. Uh, that's why se I me moved es que se me apagó la <laughs> Ok, I moved Nelly to another group. So I will send ah, you vaya. to another ah, pues. one. All right, I will send okay. you to the room... Number four, even though there are three of your classmates, but I think you will be okay there, right? Okay, thanks. Okay. Ajá. Uh -huh. ¿Qué Chan. hace? Ajá, uh -huh. ¿Ah? Sí, cabal, ¿qué hace?
I was kind of uh, worried because of my camera, but I think it's everything okay now. Okay, people, what do you think then about number one? What do you think about the question number one? It says, who is Miss Chavez? She's the recruitment coordinator. All right. Uh huh. And what about number two? What does Mr. Chang do? Uh, yeah, Mr. Chang. Mr. Chang is looking for two employees. Uh huh. What do you think she is? Or I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He is. Oh. What Mr. does he do? Is the talent management? The talent management? Okay, that will be a good option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even though it says that that's Mateo Salgado. Mateo Salgado is the talent management consultant. Oh. Uh huh. So, what do you think Mr. Chang does? Mm -hmm. Why is this person, Mr. Chang, uh, looking for these people? It's recruiting administrative. No, I don't know. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, it sounds, <laughs> it sounds interesting, that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> okay. And but what do you think? <laughs> Uh, can you assign some responsibilities to that job position, Karen? <laughs> uh -huh. No, that's good. That's good. Excellent. Yeah, you did a good job thinking about what's the job position. Yeah, but why do you think people could be asking for another people in the company? If this person is looking for a recruitment coordinator and also is looking for the talent management. What do you think this person is doing, Mr. Chang? Uh huh. The management of the shoes. Don't you think this is a new trainee or a new employee, maybe a candidate looking for the people who is going to interview him? Don't you think that? could be right it could be because he doesn't know the people he doesn't know where the people is what do they do he's asking for right don't you think so mm -hmm. a ver no, sí, verdad da la idea como que fuera una persona nueva en la compañía no conoce quién es el fulanito o el menganito verdad and he, yes. he's asking for the people that maybe they call him or call her and call him, Mr. Chang, right? And so on. All right. But well, mm, that was a very good position, Karen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> a ver, escuchamos un poquito de cómo sería el, eh, la pronunciación de recruit. Okay. Recruit. Uh, dun -dun. Here it is. Look, uh, listen. Recruit, recruiter, recruitment, recruiting. All right, got it. <laughs> recruit, recruiter, recruitment, recruiting. Crew, crew. Cuando tenemos una palabra que tiene un diptongo en inglés, normalmente la que suena es la primera. La segunda es silent. Usually, that's the general rule. Porque podemos encontrar special sounds. Pero una regla general es que cuando hayamos dos, como un diptongo, la primera suena y la segunda es silent. Entonces, en este caso tenemos through it, ¿verdad? U-E, U-I, I'm sorry, U-I. Entonces sería recruitment, como fruit. For example, no decimos fruit, ¿verdad? Decimos fruit. Uh, what are there? I don't remember any other word right now, but recruit, fruit is the same sound. You, right? Fruit, crew. Mm -hmm. 
O sea, no tratemos de pronunciar la letra I, ¿verdad? En esa palabra. Digámoslo con amor. Uf, uf, ¿ok? Recruit. Bien, vamos a ver entonces. La siguiente página. Oh, my God, it's 10 o'clock. No way, no way. 10 o'clock, oh my God. And everybody, yeah, teacher, it's 10 o'clock, it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, and I was, oh no, 10 o'clock again. All right. Well, uh, we, I wanted you to check what were the job positions or the specialists, specialists working in the HR department, okay? The HR department. And in the conversation, we saw the... Um, Recruitment coordinator, then we um, so the talent management uh, developer, right? Or something like that. So these people have different responsibilities in the human resources team. All right, but then we are going to see that tomorrow, okay? So now, please, everybody, turn your camera on. And when I call your name, you say present. I'll call the roll. Vamos a cometer un barbarismo, pero yo veo que más poquitos hay aquí. <laughs> Se nos están yendo y nos están durmiendo. A ver, no puede ser, no puede ser. Quizás porque es lunes, ¿verdad? Lunes ni las gallinas ponen. Vamos a ver. No somos gallinas, pero ponemos nosotros, ¿verdad? On Monday. Yes. All right. Daisy. Uh, perdón, 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 perdón. Voy a empezar desde. Carlos Vladimir Rodríguez Díaz. Present. All right. Cecilia Yasmin Menjibar Soto. Claudia María Guerrero Mejía. Present. Darío Antonio Alvarenga Gómez. Mr. Alvarenga. Mm. Uh, I think he got disconnected. Some people have trouble at the at the breakout room time. So that's why I think so. También se nos desconectó José Alexander, ¿verdad? Y le costó entrar nuevamente. Okay. Daisy Elizabeth Recinos Álvarez. Miss Daisy. Creo que el grupo escribió que le estaba fallando. Sí, yo es que veo que hay varios que han tenido problemas uh -huh. con el internet, incluso para ingresar, pero no sé a qué se deberá. Miren, hubo una actualización el viernes de la aplicación de Zoom. El que no ha hecho esa actualización va a estar teniendo problemas. Entonces, vayan y pongan update. Uh, y si es en el teléfono, váyanse al Play Store y pónganle update. Porque si no, les va a seguir dando problemas. Da problemas con cámara ahorita que ha hecho actualización, da problemas con sonido y da problemas también con el video que usted está mirando a los demás. Así que tienen que actualizar la aplicación. Emerson Ulises Monroy Calix. De hecho, Presente. pero en el, caso, en el caso que ahorita no me afectó, por ejemplo, no tengo que hacerlo. Eh, probablemente ya esté actualizada si usted las tiene programadas. Él solito actualiza. Si no las oh, tiene programadas, okay. entonces sí tiene que hacerlo. Y si no, él mismo le pide. Y, y a veces la saca y no la deja entrar hasta que actualiza. Oh, uh -huh. ok. Ajá, ok. Imelda Xiomara Pineda Castro. Irma Stephanie Carranza Rivas. José Alexander Hernández Carvajal. José Bernardo López Montes. Present teacher. José Gerardo Rivera Ochoa. Karen Janet Granado Sorellana. Present. Luis Javier Castillo. Present teacher. Mariana Scarlett Rodríguez Luna. Ok, José. Ya ven, José también está teniendo problemas. Ok. Vamos a ver. Marina Yancy Sandoval Bonía. Ah, ok, sí, la había visto conectada, Marina. Ok. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present, teacher. Ok. Nelly Lilibet Andrade García. 
Present. Okay. Norma Patricia, viuda de Arre. Ah, I, I remember. Oscar Noé Magaña Martínez. Pablo Adalberto Abrego Vázquez. Present. Ok. Tatiana Ivonne Torres de Beltrán. Present, Miss. Ok. Wendy Maricela Ramírez Guevara. Es <laughs> Wendy. Present, teacher. Okay. Okay, people, remember to do your homework. Please submit your. Teacher. Teacher, sorry, no me mencionó. A ver, díganme nombres porque aquí estoy tapando. Mr. Eduardo, I'm sorry. All right. Thank you. And Sandra, 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 where are you, Sandra, in my list? Sandra, Sandra. All right. Thank you very much for letting me know, Sandra. All right. I did it already. Okay, remember to do your homework. Por favor, miren, si tienen algún problema, que no entienden alguna cosa en eh, la plataforma, díganme, yo con gusto les voy a explicar o les voy a ir indicando cómo hacerlo. A veces no, no está consignada la respuesta tal como sería, ¿verdad? Entonces hay que poner un poquito de más atención. Les digo esto porque tengo varios que no han agarrado el 100, o sea, no, no han completado el 100 en algunas tareas o en el examen. Entonces, miren, felicito a Mauricio y a Nelly, ellos ya terminaron toda la plataforma, ¿verdad? ya ellos ya entregaron hasta el final. Mira, ya solo les falta asistir a las clases para que les den el diploma. Ahora, eh, de los demás, tengo algunos que van que no han finalizado algunas y se han pasado a la siguiente. Entonces, esos pedacitos que van dejando les va bajando puntos. Al final no les va a dar el promedio de, de 8, ¿verdad? Les va a dar un promedio menor. Así que hay que ir vigilantes y revisen donde dice progreso para que ustedes estén seguros que lo han subido correctamente. Si no, siempre díganme, ¿verdad? Mire, teacher, yo lo hice, pero no me lo agarró. Entonces, revisamos qué es lo que pasa, ¿ok? Have a very good night. And a mí me pasó así, pero el punto me le hacía falta. Ah, ok, ok. El punto oh, final. A veces es la, la, la eh, capital initial, ¿verdad? La mayúscula del, del principio. Ajá, sí. Pero cualquier cosa estamos a la orden, ¿ok? Thank you, teacher. Ok, have a very good night. See you tomorrow. Bye. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night teacher. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Miss. Bye. 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 Okay, here we are. Is there anything I can help you with, Jose Bernardo? How do you feel in the class? Any comment? I feel very good. And I'm glad, I'm, I am very glad the way that you teach us, teacher. All right. But I want to, you, if you could help me with my pronunciation. All right. Mm hmm the mm -hmm. last time you told me that I had to open more, more my mouth. Yes. Uh, but I, I don't understand how, how. How to open. Like this. Uh, yes. Like this, for example, if you are going to, uh, you want to improve this, you have to go letter by letter. For example, you know the name of the letter, but you have to practice the sound of the letter. You know that the, is the letter A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? You know the name, but then when you say A, right? A, there is a the position of your mouth, right? B, B, you have to close and open, right? Entonces, what you have to do, entonces, right? Then what you have to do is to practice each sound of the letter of the alphabet, okay? There, you are going to know how to put your mouth, your tongue, your teeth, right? 
and the um, breathing, the air. You can manage your air because of the sound of each letter. I will send you, um, it's a song, okay? It's a song, it's for kids, but you are gonna see the way to pronounce each letter of the alphabet. And then you are going to see that you have to open your mouth or close your mouth. It's not only open, it's but, but closing too, okay? It's not only opening, but closing. And you have to listen and imitate, listen and imitate the sound of each letter of the alphabet. And the other thing is that our accent makes, uh, interferes, right? Interferes because, for example, we don't pronounce letter S at the end of the words, but we have to force our mouths to pronounce letter S. This sound, right? It's not easy for Salvadorian because we say, oh, right? We don't say, oh, la ponce, right? We don't, we, we join letter J instead of letter S. So we have to open and close. As, yeah, oh, the letter Z, for example, we don't have that sound. Uh, we don't have that sound either. Um, because the, the, the sound of the O yeah. in the mm -hmm. middle of some words, Mm -hmm. But it's difficult. Uh, I I was studying and in a video say that the Latinos mm -hmm. pronounced yeah. oh and American don't have that that sound. Mm -hmm. Okay, they have the sound, but it's not the same graphic. All right. For example, we have five vowels. Right, we have five vowels. Uh, in Spanish, we say A, E, E, O, U, and that's it, all right, that's it. But in English, we have 15 sounds of vowels. That's why you feel that this is kind of difficult to know when and how to pronounce each letter, right? For example, I will tell you this. For pronunciation, we have a subject called phonics, okay? You can check phonics. You can check also this other subject, letters and sounds, okay? Two different subjects, phonics, letters and sounds. Okay. And let's start with the vowels. I said that we have a, uh, tell me the vowels, please. A, E. I, O, U. Correct. Yeah, but it had, I mean, each letter has two sounds. That's why you feel this, all right? It has two sounds. It has the short and the long sound. Okay? Short and long sound. I don't know if you know about this. Do you know the short and long, and long sound? No, I didn't know. No? Okay, this is in phonics. You are going to learn this in phonics. And pronunciation, what we, I mean, in a free course, we want you to say the word, okay? And you memorize the word and how it sounds. But if you want to improve your pronunciation, I recommend that you go and look for phonics videos, phonics material, all right? I will send you that video of that song for you to start with the sounds of each letter. For example, the short sound for the letter A, it's A, ah, as in apple, yeah? A, ah, that's a short okay. sound. This is not, as we say, A, eh, right? Similar, A, eh, A, eh, right? A, eh, A. Eh. It's profound. I mean, it's deep right here. Eh, eh. Eh. Yeah. And over here is kind of different because it's not ooh. It's not ooh. It's eh, eh, like this. Look, eh, 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 right? Eh. Uh-huh. Eh. It, it has a different sound, like 
if you you can stretch like this and then you do e do that e e it's it's like a little e sound yes in... and a all right but haga ese ejercicio jale si usted con los dedos así e e that's the sound yeah so if you practice e, that then you're e, gonna say e, e, like if you're smiling right e, mm. e. it's not the e that we say inside right e. we say e that's another sound for this one yeah it's not this one if you say this e that's the sound okay e. that's, that's mm. what you see in phonics Eso lo aprende usted en una materia que se llama phonics, okay? Okay. Then we have letter O. It has o. two. I mean, the five of them have five different sounds. And five short and five long. So O is not O with a short sound. It's A. Uh, A. Uh, A. Uh, 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 yes. A. Uh. Uh, it's not A, uh, okay? But because uh. that one, this one. But then we have this one. Oh, oh, like up, right? Oh, up. As if mm, you're up. hitting your stomach. Oh, yeah, something like that. Up, ah, ah, ah. Yeah, so they are different sounds. Now, the long sounds are the name of the vowels A, E, I, O, oh, U. Those are the long sounds. Esos son los sonidos largos. Entonces, Si usted comienza y quiere mejorar la pronunciación, mi recomendación es que eh, comience por los sonidos de cada letra, ¿verdad? Cada letra tiene su okay. sonido. Entonces usted va a ir mejorando la postura y va a ir también afinando. Cuando usted escuche eh, a alguien hablando, usted va a ir diferenciando por la forma de pronunciación, ¿verdad? Va a ser un poquito más fácil. Yo lo voy a enviar, a, yo creo que lo tengo ahorita. Aquí, permítame. Un videito. Es, pero sí lo quiero ir cantando después, oye. <laughs> yeah, I want to hear I, you singing I, I am a song. bad singer. No way. You have to practice and you will do it, all right? <laughs> okay. Uh, I will send you this. It's easy. It's easy because this is for kids, okay? It's for kids and um, it's the alphabet song. It's the alphabet song, but it has the sound. Not only the names. Acuérdese que las letras en inglés tienen un nombre y un sonido. Entonces hay que aprender el nombre, pero también hay que aprender el sonido para aprender a pronunciar. Ok. Este y es bien bonito y es bien fácil. Es un razón. Oh, la música. Esta. Ahorita se la paso para que ahora mire usted se acueste practicando y con esta canción sí. Y va a ver los sonidos y le va a ayudar a abrir y cerrar. Ok, dicho. Lo voy a poner en el grupo. Bueno. Ok. Así que ahí usted practique nombre y que sonido de cada letra. Ok. Ok. There you go. Is there any other thing you want me to help you with? No, by now, teacher. All but right. That is, 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 is so much. All right. All right. You may practice with the alphabet, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nunca tenga miedo de ir de regreso a lo básico. Siempre mm -hmm. lo básico le va a volver a ayudar y a refrescar y le va a empujar todavía más hacia adelante. Hoy. Mm -hmm. okay. Por eso es que he visto yo mucho, bueno, todos. Hay unos que abren más la boca, otros que no, pero todos hacen el, los gestos así. Yeah. Cuando hablan. Yes, and English is like that. And also, they say, ay, pero es que vos cambias el tono. No, pero es que es diferente el sonido. Entonces, no puedo, va, es como que me digan que es, yo hablo chino como salvadoreña. No me pueden decir que va a sonar igual. Tiene diferentes sonidos. Entonces, hay que hacer así, ¿verdad? Para hablar con otro idioma. O hay que hablar así, ¿verdad? ¿Qué sé yo? Imagínese el alemán, ¿verdad? O el francés sí. tiene sus propios sonidos. Entonces, eh, no hay que hacerle caso a la gente. Okay. <laughs> okay, I had a teacher. Couple of teacher, okay? <laughs> okay, teacher. Gracias. There you go, Sir Bernard. Have a very good night. See you good tomorrow. Night, Bye. See you tomorrow. See night. you. Bye.